You know, Unreal Engine is a game engine. And because it is a game engine, it has some features that are very specifically dedicated to what games would usually need. And one of those is a built-in damage dealing system. So let's take a quick look at how all that works today. I've got my usual third-person character blueprint here. This is just a default uh, with a couple of like debug keys that are used for other stuff. We can just delete that real quick. And let's make a debug F key event here, just for demonstration purposes, of course. And when we press that, we're going to uh, sphere overlap actors. This is one of many ways to detect whether or not you should be damaging an enemy. You can just detect in a sphere in front of your character whether or not there is something to be damaged and then apply damage to it you can have like a weapon that itself has a collision box on it we're just going to do it this way the important part here is the dealing damage methods and that will work no matter how your weapon collision stuff is set up uh, so we'll get the actor location and we'll add something to that which will be the actor forward vector multiplied by a float. And that is going to be uh, offsetting it in the direction that our character is facing by a certain amount. So we can right click this and change this to a float. And let's say that is like 300 uh, units in front. And then for all of the actors that we overlap with, we're going to do a for each loop. And we're going to simply apply damage to them as easily as that and then we can put in a base damage which of course can be a variable on our character so let's add a variable here uh, let's call this like damage for instance which will be a float and our default value for damage will be 15. now here we can put in that as the base damage then then we have the event instigator and the damage causer so the event instigator is the controller object that uh, instigates this damage event. So if that is an AI pawn, it will be their AI controller. If it is a player, it will be the player controller. So we can just get controller, and that way uh, the game engine can keep track of who dealt that damage and maybe like give them some score, all that kind of stuff, if need be. Uh, the damage causer is the actual actor that's causing the damage. So if you have like a melee attack, that's going to always be the same, of course. But if you have a, uh, like, I think it gives a example here for a grenade or like a bullet that actually like spawns in as an object, that should then be the damage causer. Because if you want to have something specifically about like that grenade, you will have a reference to it. Uh, in this case, that will just be a reference to uh, ourselves. And then we have a damage type class. Uh, by default, we have damage type and damage type environment. Uh, you can make other damage types. It returns a value here. And that value is the actual damage that ended up being applied to whatever actor we're applying it to. If no damage was dealt, because maybe whatever you're trying to attack doesn't actually have health, for instance, or doesn't implement anything to take care of receiving damage, which we'll do in a moment, uh, this will just be zero. And that way you have a little bit of feedback uh, for adding to your like local score or whatever. You can use this value very, very easily. Now, I should also point out that there is multiple versions of damaging. That being uh, apply damage, this is just a direct damage apply. So this isn't all that complex, but we also have apply point damage. And this is, as you can see, it also creates uh, some extra information like the hit from direction so if you for any reason like in a shooter game need to know which direction you were hit from uh, this is a damage event that can also give that info and if we uh, split the structure pin for hit info we have like a bunch of different hit info here right so usually you would use this in combination with a, a line tracer or something like that so we can like line trace by channel. And now that we have recombined that structure pin, you can see that the out hit here is the same as just a hit info input. So this would be how you uh, do that. So if that is in any way relevant to dealing damage in this case, uh, you can apply point damage. Uh, the more interesting one though is apply radial damage and radial damage with fall off. I'm going to just add them both in uh, for the most part radial damage with fall off is just the same uh, but with a fall off value who would have guessed so we've got a base damage we've got an origin point so this is kind of like if you have an explosive at the origin point it will be dealing a lot of damage 
And in this case, this is just a area of effect kind of damage, where it will damage anything within the radius here. For radio with fall off, what it will do is we'll damage everything in the radius, but the further something is away from the origin of the damage event, the less damage it will receive. So let's say that we do a 100 damage, and we can say the minimum damage here is 10, and the inner radius is 500, and the outer radius is 2500. If somebody is at like 2000 units away from the origin position, they're going to take significantly reduced damage, and they're probably going to take this minimum damage value. So if we just set that back to 1, it's going to hardly register for them, but they're still technically going to be uh, getting hit. So that's quite nice to be able to do. Now, you will note, uh, I should point out, that with apply damage, we give in a damaged actor, but of course with apply radial damage and apply radial damage with fall off, uh, it's pretty much doing this spheres rays that we're doing here uh, within this function so what you do instead is it will just apply damage to anything within this radius uh you can set up things like walls so damage prevention channel uh, in the example of a wall if we have the damage uh, taking place here and the player is here but then we have a wall for instance right here right and that is on the damage prevention collision channel so you can set that to whatever you want it to be. Visibility is just effectively anything that is visible in your game. Uh, you won't actually be taking damage because the wall stopped you from taking damage. And then, of course, we also have these ignored actors, which if there's specific actors that you don't want to be able to be damaged by this specific uh, damage instance, you also can just put them into an array and give them in as a value here uh, to ignore applying damage to altogether. Now, we're just going to stick with the basic apply damage for now, uh, but that's all the different damage variations that you can apply. And for this, I will also uh, just set the overlap uh, sphere here to 250, and then I need to put in something here uh, so that it knows what channel to uh, to trace on. This is not specific to damage applying, this is just how sphere overlaps work. So don't worry too much about this at the moment. So now how do we apply that damage to something? Because this is just going to apply damage, but how do we actually deal with that? Well, for that we're going to make a simple new... Let's make it a pawn, because that's fun. And we'll call this enemy. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to add in a, a static mesh here. And that's going to be a sphere. Just so that we have something to look at, right? In the event graph here, if we look for damage and we scroll all the way up, we have event any damage, event point damage, and event radial damage. So we have specific events for when we uh, get radial damage applied to us, which has some extra information going with it. And then also uh, for our point damage, again, if you're getting hit by like a line trace from like a sniper or something like that, uh, it puts through all that information for you to use in uh, the actor that is taking the damage. We're not going to be using this, but do be aware that those are a thing that you can use. And of course, uh, this will only ever fire if you are applying point damage. If you're applying radial damage, this won't fire. And the other way around for radial damage only applies when it is relevant. For any damage though, uh, this will fire anytime any sort of those damage events happens to this actor. So we have the damage that is uh, getting sent through. So that would be our, I think it was a value of 15. That we're sending through then we have uh, the damage type which is uh, the damage type class that we're putting in here the instigator so the controller that instigated this damage and then the damage causer which is the actor that caused the actual damage again that could be a bullet or the actual character itself and this can be as easy as just saying hey we have an hp uh, value for a float and we're going to set that value to being uh, our hp minus the damage and this is effectively just the most basic way to deal damage uh, that you can. Now, ideally, you set something like this up in a parent class. So we just have this uh, as like pawn enemy. Uh, and then all the enemies in the game will be child classes of this. So that we only have this set up in the one place. So every enemy will have this behavior. will be able to take damage in this way. And we can also, in uh, making a blueprint, uh, we can make a damage type if we wanted to so let's say that we have like fire damage when we open that up uh you can see that it doesn't have an event graph or anything like that it just has a, a couple of values here so it is caused by world true if the damage type is caused by the world 
falling into uh, lava or out of the level or whatever. So in this case, probably not. We have scale momentum by mass. True, if uh, imparted momentum is received by pawn's mass for pawn using character movement. So this is something to do with a uh, knockback, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to be real with you, I've never used this. So I don't think it's relevant. And here we have a damage uh, fall off, which I believe only applies to radial damage. So if you have uh, our apply radial damage, right? So apply with fall off. We have an inner and an outer radius, but it doesn't really give us any information as to how quickly things fall off between the inner radius and the outer radius, between the minimum amount of damage and the maximum amount of damage. That is what a damage type can provide you with, the damage fall off. So the higher this number is, the sharper that fall off is going to be. Also with radial damage, uh, and this is probably what the momentum scale is actually referring to. I personally don't really use radial damage. Uh, we can change the velocity and change the strength of that impulse so if you have an explosion for instance you would make that radial damage this will also then immediately uh, change the velocity of any pawn that gets hit by it so that an explosion will deal damage but also actually blow things away from it which is what an explosion should do probably and now we've got some stuff to do with uh chaos destruction so if you again have an explosion it will also uh, destroy destructible terrain now, one last thing that I do want to uh, point out here is that this event, uh, any damage, we are just subtracting this from the HP. And you might think that if we do something to like multiply this damage by a variable, right, like 0 0.5 or something like that before we uh, subtract it from the HP, that that might then change this output value. But that's not actually fully the case. Because in reality, what happens is there's a little bit of C++ going on under the hood. And what happens is apply damage actually runs a different function that Blueprint doesn't have access to. And that is called take damage. So if I look at take damage, there's a couple of event dispatches that are related to it, but we don't actually have the take damage. We can look in the function overrides. But all of these just create those damage events. So for some reason that I personally don't have a clue why they wouldn't uh, expose this to Blueprint, but this is not exposed to Blueprint. If you want this value to return something, you're going to need to at least get a little bit into C++ in that you can just point that at a Blueprint function then and do everything actually in Blueprint. Uh, but you're going to need to go into C++ and overwrite some stuff. And that's not really what this video is about because I just kind of want to show you that Unreal has this built-in damaging system uh, so that you don't need to go like a cast to enemy and then get the enemy HP and then set enemy HP because this is something that you will see like quite often, right? You set the enemy HP and you effectively do the same damage calculation, but you do it inside of the player. Uh, but now the player needs to cast with literally anything that can take damage. This is effectively just a interface that Unreal has preset up for you. And what's even more wonderful is, as you can see by the icon right here, it runs on the server. So if you're making a multiplayer game, this already just works over the network. It's already uh, entirely replicated because this doesn't even run on a client. This runs on the server. And if you have a single player game, that is the same machine, obviously. Uh, but, but in a multiplayer game, that does tend to become a, a lot more complex a lot more quickly. So this is really the way you want to get used to applying damage. So that's a lot of things about applying damage in Unreal Engine, uh, but do go ahead and just experiment with it and have a little bit of fun and just play around with it a little bit. And I will see you all back in whatever I do next. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Student tier supporters, Earl Monsival Erno, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas,